Chinese fighting fish or betta is native to Thailand, which can be easily found in most canals. Raising them in the past, on the other hand, aimed at sport games because of its fighting instinct. The Siamese fighting fish have currently been developed into the species that are beautifully marked with colors and stripes. The turn into the export that brings universal admiration and generates attractive incomes among racers as well. And this is Thailand at large. And now we're talking about something from our cultural way and lifestyle. We're actually bringing the cause of cultural to be and develop it to be one of the beautiful fishes and economy fishes that we call Siamese fighting fishes. This one is well known worldwide as our Thailand has been one of the most exporting um, fighting fishes around the world. And that's why I'm traveling to this place at Nakhon province. We could call it as one of the capital city for creating and exporting the beautiful fighting fishes. Among over 100 beta farms in Nakhon Pathom province, today I chose to visit Hanasanan Farm, which serves as the model learning center for culturing beautiful beta fish. The goal is to offer a complete range of export in accordance with the Department of Fisheries. Through breeding, baby beta fish will be born and nursed here until they are old enough to be sold worldwide. This farm is currently producing and selling over a million of beta fish a year, both domestically and internationally. Its target customers are China, Iran and America, which can generate a hundred thousand of income a month. Beta Splendens is a scientific name, meaning beautiful warriors, and Siamese fighting fish is a common name, meaning a Siamese fighter. The culture of Thailand native beta fish, which aims at sports, has been popular since ancient times. So we can divide the Siamese fighting fish, a native of Thailand, into three types, namely Beta Splendens. Short fin beta splendens, whale tail. In 1896, the Siamese fighting fish was first raised in Germany and later spread across America. After that, the species was continuously developed, leading to a rise in popularity around the world. The improvement of betta fish species has currently made much progress. There are many popular betta fish such as whale tail, the first long-tailed betta in Thailand. Due to its long and bright colored fins, which resemble Chinese opera customs, it is called whale tail. The species was developed from short fin betta splendens for the purpose of having longer fins and tails. This type of betta is usually raised for ornamental purposes. Its worldwide prevalence has led to the continuous development of betta fish, which result in the wider variety of species today. Half Moon Delta has been a result of an attempt to develop beta species since 1957 in Germany. But 
It was not until 1987 that French and German beta farmers were successful in their developments. The significant feature of the half moon delta is the caudal fin, which is in the shape of a semicircle and spreads at a 180 degree angle. Due to this beauty, it is popular in many countries around the world. Big ear or dumbo, whose fins are much larger than normal, often white, resembling the ears of an elephant, is a result of beta mutation in America, producing the new species of beta named big ear. Half-moon delta is a hybrid cross between a half-moon delta and a short fin beta splendent. The acquired feature of this type of beta is a large and thick body like short fin beta splendens and a dorsal fin which is large and able to spread at a 180 degree angle like half-moon delta. Double tail whose tail fin is duplicated into two lobes or called double tail is a result of bell tail mutation in America. It is later crossbred again and again until we get a new version of better fish whose tail fin is duplicated into two lobes. The racing of the double tail is currently gaining wide popularity among races. Tail is the beta whose species was developed by an Indonesian beta farmer in 2000. Due to the beautiful appearance of a spiny tail which resembles a crown, the raising of this beta is gaining popularity in many countries. No matter what types of bettas, they are all natives to Thailand we can still see the original genetic characteristics hidden in the beauty of diversity nowadays. section you have seen that around them they were growing the fishes but right here they're in the zone of like a nursery where they keep growing and growing so around here we have like a nursery for all these um, fighting fishes from like uh, one month to two months and so on until they grow into the selling part So around here as you can see there are nursery for uh, one month or two months and so on. They're starting to be like a baby fish but then the way to actually taking care of them is um, to actually put the Indian almond, it's like a leaf to put into it to make them, it's like a herbal one to make them healthy and normally these fishes will get sick during like the end of rainy season and beginning of the winter. So during them we have to be careful about them and see the way they they swim. You can see the way they swim will look differently. Well then, you have to change the amount of water. Normally you have to put around like third, fourth of the water into this um, area. But when they are getting sick, you have to put only like one quarter. So a little bit of water there and you put a little bit of salt into it to make them getting better. Within three days, they will be healthy again. Actually, um, they said that it's not really that hard to raise and taking care of these fighting fishes, which is really amazing. Okay, 
so the way to feeding them is you're gonna put them the feed they have to feed them and um, you have to be careful not to give them too much because they might die because they eat too much because the baby one around one month they eat a lot so you only put a little bit of food during once a day in the morning section that's it Right now we still are mixed together with the male and female but normally they will sell only the male one because the male one will be the beautiful one so mainly they will keep the uh, female one the beautiful one to be like a mother in the future but the rest they will sell them to be like food but for male here we will keep and growing them to be a beautiful one and this is the food for baby better fish it is Mona, which can be easily found in the area of Nakhon Patom province. So for the um, small baby fishes, the fighting fishes will only eat this one, which is the Mona. For this uh, fighting fishes, it's a good capital location for fighting fishes because this area is good for um, breeding them and also these food for Mona is easy to find because this is a center where they have the pig farm a lot. So the price is really good. It's a low cost one. It's only like three, uh, 30 baht compared to another places, you might have to buy it a lot more expensive. After like three to four months, when they're trying to grow a little bit longer and bigger, you can feed them extra with the achimia, uh -huh. achimia or the mosquito lava or the steam egg and also with this mona as well. And they will grow and grow until you can sell them. Okay, let's go. When the better reach the edge of 45 to 60 days, we will start to separate their gender. In doing so, the female fish will be removed and only male fish will be put in a half full bottle where they reach the age of 3 to 4 months in preparation for sale. And right now I'm surrounded by these fighting fishes in the fighting fishes farm. But is it right here down below? Could you imagine? <gasps> there it is, right here in the bottle under me. So this is real amazing as you can see the bottle around here, but all these fishes are down there. <laughs> So this one is two to three months old. This one is half moon breed and really pretty, the red one. Okay, so as we know, this is the fighting fishes. That's why we cannot have it together because they're gonna fight each other until death. That's why we have to separate it into like bottle one by one. And that's why they're choosing this bottle because it's like could save the area. You can see this bottle can be like thousand of them around here. That's why they could actually have a limited space. Actually, in 
this area, they have all together 70,000 bottles of fishes. Oh my god. And they have to actually feed them every day, once a day. And we should know how they're doing it. This is an innovative feeding machine which was easily devised. The muna will be pumped into a hose and we just squeeze them into the bottle like this. It seems not to be quite difficult for a beginner like me. <laughs> And this is the tool for changing water in a fish bottle. In doing so, you need to do daily water changes of 10,000 bottles every 3rd days. It is one of the things that amazed me how the tool is easily devised but can actually perform with great efficiency. This one is actually the way that they put water in, like this in the bottle. Okay, like this. And then, how would we know that it will not come above the bottle? Is because they have cutting around here, as you can see, so that the old water will come out and the new water will refreshing in, like this. Wow, they actually designed everything. That's why it's possible for us to do this one here. The water used for the changes is merely a tap water which has been left out for at least one day to get rid of chlorine. The beta will still be kept in the bottle like this for about 3-4 to four days in preparation for sale. And right here we have to raise it until 4 months old. When they are 4 months, we can actually sell them right away. But mainly this place, they're actually exporting it to another country. So let's find out more details about it. Let's go. age of four months, the beta will be selected for sizes and colors as requested by customers. At least 10,000 of beta fish that are ready to be sold overseas will be sent at a time. Each can fetch a price of no less than 100 baht, a price increase of at least three or four times compared with domestic sales. We have to actually um, getting up to the sizes, the amount of it, the size of the fish, the color of the fish, and then we put in a small pack like this and put in the water into this machine. Actually, this machine is normal one that you can actually pack for food or anything, but this one we adapt to be for fishes. And then we put it here above and then we're going to export it. The delivery process is done by putting the bitters into a tightly capped plastic bag and packing around 400 to 600 of them in each box. The bitter have such a lot of patience, they can stay in a bag for no less than 7 days. Although the international shipping can sometimes take up to almost 10 days, there is a fat chance the bettas will die in transit. Prior to the transit, we need to skip feeding the fish for about 2 days so that there is no food left in the stomach. 
or else the fish will excrete while in transit. This is one of the causes of death because of water pollution through the discharge of waste. Another important practice is the use of methylene blue, which is mixed in the water to help preserve and prevent the disease that might attach to the fish's body. So these bulk of fish here were sent today and they will give it in China tomorrow. They said here they are exporting to China. They will get it tomorrow. Actually, uh -huh. they're shipping worldwide in many places. Romania, America, Japan, Hong Kong, Taiwan, everywhere. And up to the rain where it is. For example, America might be longer than like 14 hours. Another place might be like Japan, maybe five hours. At present, Thailand is internationally accepted as the largest better producing source in the world, with the export capacity in more than 50 countries. Each customer has different tastes. For example, people in China would not prefer bettas with quite high prices and they usually order in large quantities at a time, such as crown tail for example. As for people in America, they prefer the bettas with higher prices such as Super Delta and Half Moon because of their beautiful colors. Nowadays, the betta is widely purchased both domestically and internationally. There are new sales channel such as online shopping at worldwideweb.aquabed.com. It is a new channel for both small and large better farmers, including amateurs who have just started a better fish farming. To sell their bettas, sellers can log into the auction system on website. Sometimes, if you're in luck, it is not difficult at all to turn bettas that cost 50 to 100 baht into the ones that cost a thousand baht. And as you can see here about these Siamese fighting fishes that are originally from Thailand and it is actually we're bringing out the cause of the cultural way to bring these beautiful fishes here and we're breeding it more to a many species, many colorful types and there are so plenty of them and nowadays is well known worldwide and we could actually make it as uh, one of the economy fishes. We're bringing it out the board, we're exporting it to many countries countries around the world, making it well known and we could actually make it more valuable, increase the price, making outcome for our people and this is what we are um, prouding of and we should be proud about all this thing that we are making from Thailand and I would love to say that this is actually our number one exporting fishes in Thailand and we are doing it right here and it's really amazing. But this is Thailand at last, Mimun Ken Hager, we have to say goodbye for today. Sadiqa.